Oh, hey, what's up? What you doing around here? Yeah, what you doing around here? We love movies, right? Me and you, you ever have trouble finding stuff to watch sometimes? Netflix is always giving me whack-ass recommendations. Same thing with Hulu, same thing with all of them. I think they make it hard for you to find the good stuff on purpose. They try to push all their weakest movies in your face and try to trick you into watching that. I swear, I spend more time scrolling than anything. Half the time, I'll just give up and turn on YouTube. Thankfully, my sponsors today are from this new app called Likewise. They just changed everything, bro. Likewise is the fastest and the easiest way to discover all the best TV shows and movies movies throughout all the different streaming platforms. It's super clutch. It comes in handy all the time. I'm not joking. For instance, this movie here, Cradle to the Grave. If I search for this on Likewise, they'll tell me exactly where I can watch it. They give you really good and accurate recommendations for similar movies. If you like these kind of movies, you can search for better movies though. And you can even leave comments and start whole discussions about the movie, whichever movie. I'm on there all the time talking about Baby Boy. I got some insane Baby Boy fan theory you wouldn't even believe it it gets super deep likewise will give you new personalized recommendations every day thanks to a combination of smart technology and real recommendations from real people you'll always have something new to watch I guarantee it you can browse through your favorite genres and filter the results based on which services you have if you have a bunch of them you know how useful this is that's crazy right when you find something that looks cool you can save it for later now you can have this one list of movies to watch later and Instead of a bunch of different lists spread all over the damn internet. And Likewise just launched a new feature called Groups, which connects you to people with similar interests so you can find more what you love. I'm actually the host of the Black Legends group on there, so I post all my favorite hood movies on there, and I even do live events where you can come chat with me or just listen in or whatever. I actually have an event coming up on June 17th. I'm a live chat about the best black sitcom dads. It's gonna be a whole tournament for Father's Day. Only one of them can be the winner and be my dad. Use the link in the description to download the app. It's 100% free all the time. It's a free app. Get it on Android or iOS. You'll be automatically added to my Black Legends group if you use the link. Make sure you say what's up. Join the conversation too, June 17th. It's gonna be super lit. Make sure you be there. Again, download Likewise. Use the link in the description. Check them out, man. Every download helps the channel out like crazy. And it's a good app. It's super useful. Thank you, Likewise, for sponsoring the video. Now it's time to start the video. It starts off with DMX and his team of jewel thieves robbing a bank or something. It's a DMX action movie. It's wild, bro. It's really a DMX action movie. He's the main ass character. He does kung fu and action movie puns and all that. It's amazing. So their plan right now is to break into this safe deposit area to steal some jewels. They are trying to steal these special kind of jewels, apparently. It's like these black diamonds. They real valuable. I'm jumping too far ahead though. You don't know that part yet. Forget I said that. I'm here for the reception. Name please. Angie Rollins. You can go on up front elevator to the mezzanine. Right. Change of plans. He's gay. You're up. No way. Yes way. This is not a conversation. Do it. Make it good. Gabrielle Union is trying to seduce this guard or distract him or something, but it turns out he's gay as hell. So they switch it up and they send in Anthony Anderson instead. I don't think this how it works though. You just send in this random fat nigga to seduce somebody? Okay. I'm sure it's not like that though. Also, she hella assuming right now off this one page. That could be anything. That could be a damn Old Spice ad or something. What if this shit a regular magazine, lady? Aloha. You know, I hope you don't take offense to this, but uh, I have such a weakness for a man in uniform. I'm not actually <laughs> supposed to be talking on duty. Who's talking? Baby, this is flirting. I just hope I'm not too pretty for you. I'm hooked up. That bitch. They make a bunch more gay jokes. This part goes on way too long, bro. But whatever, their plan worked. Anthony Anderson seduced the guy somehow. Okay, I'm not trying to roast Anthony Anderson or nothing. 
I'm sure he could pull plenty of niggas if he wanted to. You know what I'm saying though, man. You know what they doing. I'm big in the pins. Earthquake. But I bet you you can hit a 10 on a Richter scale anytime, huh, Douglas? But you want some dick? They get into the vault and they start searching for the black diamonds. They looking for some black diamonds. They real valuable. Meanwhile, Jet Li is like on the case or something. I don't know. He's actually been doing shit this whole time. I just didn't mention it. He's a cop from Taiwan and it's his job to protect the black diamonds. That's the whole setup. They definitely could have shortened this fucking whole opening heist part, man. This shit is taking forever. It's not that interesting. Get to the damn karate, please. So who's stuff you still anyway, man? Drug dealers, money launderers. Works for me. This is what we came for. That's what I'm talking about. Jackpot. These fucking plastic Lego pieces. Look at that shit. That shit don't look like a diamond, bro. Shit look like some crayons. They could at least made them shit shiny or something, right? That shit not even shiny. But they grab all the loot and they go back to the tunnels. They got to split up now and DMX homeboy runs into Jet Li in the tunnels and he gets his ass beat, naturally. Don't you have a gun though, bro? Why the fuck don't you have a gun? You're a damn robber, nigga. I mean, can you fight at least? <laughs> Stones. Jet Li gets all the way back to his car and he drives away. Perfect time to actually fucking check the bag and see if you grabbed the correct one and you didn't just grab some decoy bag. I mean, you could have checked a little earlier, but it's all good. He a good police officer. Why would you not check the bag before you left? How are you smart enough to track them down and foil their whole underground tunnel plan, but you doing shit like this? Look how he walked away all cool and shit. Like he fucking saved the day and shit. You should have assumed there was more than one person, bro. These niggas drilled into the bottom of a bank vault. You thought it was just this one nigga in a baby blue leather jacket with no equipment? You're a dummy, bitch. Anyway, we go back to DMX now. He already escaped on top of the train with Gabrielle Union. They did that top of train thing like every action movie in the fucking universe. Can we retire this fucking top of train thing, please? I'm sorry for yelling. What are you still doing up? Just a little longer. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. A diamond for my princess. DMX gives his daughter this stolen ass necklace and he says this little hip hop prayer for her or whatever. I actually like it though, it's kind of catchy. It's a nice moment. Angels east, angels west, north and south, just do your best to guard her and watch her while she rests. Amen. Amen. Oh. Give me some love. Oh. oh God, you made it. Some Chinese dude kicked my ass all around that goddamn train track, man. But maybe it's time to rethink this no gun policy shit. Man. A little ass whooping ain't shit. At least you didn't have to play all foxy with the rent a cop, all right? I don't understand the point of a no gun policy, really. I understand you don't want to kill people or whatever, maybe. It's probably still better to have one, though. Somebody just beat your man ass and took all the loot. I'm surprised that shit don't happen more often, bro. DMX leaves and he goes to see his black market homie named Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold in the movie. He's the nerdy white sidekick. He runs this illegal weapons pawn shop type of shit and DMX asks him if he knows anything about black diamonds. Wow, you got me. Find out what they're worth. I'll be back. Looks dead to me. Yo, you the one that called me. Who the fuck are you? My name is Sue. All right, Sue, I'm Sally. Get up. DMX and Jet Li have a fight scene now. DMX actually getting with this nigga a little bit, believe it or not. X gonna give it to you, him. The main bad guy calls Jet Li's phone though and he interrupts the whole fight. He starts saying all the generic bad guy stuff. He gonna take over the world or some shit. I wasn't listening. The stones are already mine. Yo, check this out. 
I got them. I'm selling them. Put the money on the wood. I can be a very dangerous man, Mr. Fate. You know what, dog? It don't even matter who the fuck you are. I ain't got nothing for you. The bad guy says he wants the stones back, but X not gonna give it to him. Then DMX leaves and he gets ambushed and they have another surprisingly decent fight scene in this alleyway. This shit is finally starting to get entertaining. I'm a businessman. Make me a fucking offer! Jet Li comes and he saves DMX and they both work together now to beat the bad guys up. There's some angry dogs barking in the alley behind this fence. That was probably DMX idea. Bet money that was fucking DMX idea. Jet Li and DMX do a team finishing move where they kick the bad guys through the fence so the dogs can get them. Except that shit backfires oh, and the fuck. dogs start chasing these niggas instead. That's actually hilarious. That's what they get for being extra, bro. This nigga backflipped off the wall with some Tims on? Bro, New York niggas, man. They different, bro. They can all do this shit, actually. Fun facts, they teach them this in school. They go back to the weapon shop, but apparently somebody came and robbed Tom Arnold dumbass while they were gone. Pretty easily, by the way. How the hell does somebody just walk into your black market weapon shop and take whatever they want? You ain't got no guys protecting your stuff? I'm surprised this shit don't happen more often, bro. So I did what you said, right? I put word out on the street to get some info on the stones. Next thing I know, the Wu-Tang Clan shows up here. Things get even worse when the main bad guy calls back and he says he kidnapped DMX's daughter also. Son of a- I want my stones, Mr. Fate. I want the stones. You want your daughter. We can help each other. So I'm stuck with you. It's like a fake rush hour now. They don't like each other, but they gotta work together, buddy cops, right? Or something? Chinese and black people? Save a little girl? It's a fake rush hour, bro. I'm sorry about your daughter. My name is 15. About time you PMD, man. PMD? Yeah, put me down. What's this all about? That's not a real saying, bro. PMD? You don't even need to abbreviate that shit. That's not saving you any syllables. We cut over to the bad guys again and they start discussing their stupid ass, generic ass plan some more. Why not negotiate for the girl? Doesn't make any sense. We'll need her. She stays alive. For now. Shut up! You shut up! We go back to DMX and he's taking Jet Li to go see his friend, Jump Chambers. Who's Jump Chambers? He's like some big crime boss. He know about all the crimes in the world or whatever in the city. This nigga's in jail, by the way, in this nice ass luxury jail cell. This shit's sweet as fuck, bro. I wish I was in jail. Is this real, bro? Can niggas have nice ass jail cells? I feel like I've seen this shit in movies before. Who all been to jail? Y'all ever see that shit? Comment below. My little girl is mixed up in this. It was a big heist. Risky heist. Gotta be something good. This little girl. Make another one. You make it so <laughs> Jump Chambers being a dickhead and he not trying to help nobody, so they leave. DMX has a hunch that the Stones might be a Jump Chambers nightclub, so he wants to check it out alone. We then cut over to Gabrielle Union, who's already at the club for some reason. She got a plan of her own, I think. I don't know what she's doing. Delicious What's up, Odeon? You looking for a job? I need something. How about we go to my office and we talk about this a little bit more? While she's doing that, Jet Li and Tom Arnold are on their way to follow a clue also or some shit. It looks like it's broad ass daylight right now. What is everybody doing at this fucking nightclub then in the middle of the day? Did they not think about that? It doesn't make any sense. Here we are. How can you recognize him? Well, I didn't see his face, but then again, they all kind of look the same, if you know what I mean. Or so do you guys. 
Go in the house. They end up following the clues all the way to this fake ass Def Jam Vendetta fight club. Again, it's like three in the afternoon, bro. Is a whole fight club going on right now? These all seem like nighttime activities, right? I'm not crazy. They should have filmed this shit at night, bro. We go back to Gabrielle Union and she's still at the club looking for the stones, maybe. She causing a distraction or something? I don't know the fuck she's doing here right now, bro. She ends up trying to seduce this one guy and she starts getting bucket naked. It's pretty cool, man. It's actually a really good scene. It goes on for a long ass time, but that's okay. The whole movie should have been this, honestly. Anthony Anderson dresses like an exterminator so he can sneak inside the club. That is the most cliche shit I ever heard. I can't believe it, actually. He does sell the shit pretty well, though. I would probably fall for this. You see that little motherfucker up there, man? That's me. I am a licensed exterminator, man. Why I got to fuck with you? That's what burned my ass right to the bone, man. The brother's just out here trying to make an honest living. Anthony Anderson goes into the main office and he puts down some bug bombs and he leaves or whatever. Now DMX and this one yo can finally do their part. What was that? Oh my god. Okay, call me crazy, but I don't see the point of this exterminator part of the plan. These niggas basically just bust through the window and blew the safe open. Why the fuck you need a whole fake exterminator for that? It doesn't make any sense. Oh shit, yo T, come on, dog. Let's get the hell out of here. They right outside. Shut the fuck up and get out of here! Watch it. Don't let her leave. You know, uh, I got the big one. Oh. Get in your pants. This nigga said, what? I got the big one? Which grown ass adult person wrote that shit? Come on, bro. I got the big one? You got the big what? Shirt? We all know that's not fucking true. That is the smallest shirt in the universe, sir. How the fuck you put that shit on even? Mailman face? You way too old to have that tight ass shirt on. You way too old to be a regular ass henchman, by the way. This nigga look like a fucking deacon at a church, bro. You fired, bro. Enjoy the jail sex, fate. Eight versus 12! Eight versus 12! I know this wasn't the plan, but if you don't get in there and fight right now, they're gonna throw us out of here on our asses. We'll never find this guy. You win. No quitting! Get your ass back in there! What the hell is happening right now? The early 2000s were weird as fuck, man. Y'all niggas was doing anything. This doesn't even seem real. This shit feels like a fake movie that would be on in the background of a real movie. By the way, I love how he beats the shit out of all these trained ass cage fighters, but he couldn't handle DMX in a one-on-one -on -one for some reason. We go back to the bad guy again, and he kills Jump Chambers. R.I.P. Jump Chambers. This motherfucker had two scenes. What was the point of this character? You could have cut him out completely. Okay, he's all patched up. Ready to move. X starts giving it to everybody and he breaks free and rides away on this dirt bike. The police catch up to him though and now it's a dirt bike high speed chase. It seems like a normal day for DMX, actually. At this very moment, a man identified as Anthony Fate is leading police on a wild, high-speed chase. And they're not about to let this guy slip through their fingers. It turns out the black diamonds are actually synthetic plutonium. Sure, why not? Plutonium? That's a science word. You're a dummy, The bad bitch. guys are planning on auctioning off the stones to these other bad guys. Now Jet Li and DMX gotta stop them and save the world. Fake rush hour. One small fragment, easily transformed into a source of immense energy. We're now reaching the yield level of a Sidewinder missile. Tomahawk cruise missile. Two Hiroshima's. New World Order. There are 50 stones available in the first sale, and the opening bid is $200,000 per stone. 
Bro, did you say 200,000 per stone? What the fuck? That's actually super cheap. Why the fuck is it so cheap? You said a piece of that shit was like two Hiroshimas. That shit should be billions of dollars, my nigga. Bro, my fucking Lil Bow Wow could scrape together $200,000 and blow the world up, you telling me? That's unbelievable. That's a good ass deal. All the evil villains want the stones real bad. They start going crazy and overwhelming the chick and trying to buy all of them. You shouldn't even have auctioned these bitches off. If you're gonna sell them so cheap, you could have sold these shits to one guy, easy. Four and a half for 50. 24 and three quarters. 25 for 50 for me! Three motherfuckers! You heard the man, party's over! I said don't move, motherfucker! She's out, she's out. She's on a move. DMX's daughter starts running away and this henchman right here starts chasing after her. Why though? You don't even need her anymore, bro. Y'all only kidnapped her for the stones. Y'all niggas been had the damn stones. Why is it so important to re-kidnap her right now? You know, I like how everybody else got crazy ass weapons and shit, and Gabrielle Union got a fucking jacket. What is this? Get this bitch some nunchucks or something, bro. They have been shitting on Gabrielle Union this whole movie. They didn't give her any cool moments at all. She was literally just on screen titty meat the whole time. She don't even get a cool final fight now? That's Hollywood for you, bro. They blow the bad guy's helicopter up, and now he defeated. Except, no he not, this nigga is unscathed from this explosion for some reason. Whatever though, it's time for the final fight now. Jet Li and the bad guy face off. Jet gonna give it to him. They fighting in this fucking ring of fire or whatever. This nigga Jet Li loves fighting people in a ring of fire. This is exactly like the end of Romeo Must Die. Would you thought niggas wouldn't notice? We go back to the girls fight. These bitches are still fighting apparently. I swear, I forgot all about them. Were they fighting this whole time? That's what I'm saying. These action scenes be long as fuck and out of order and shit. It don't feel like a real movie. It feels like a nigga playing with toys in front of you and just doing whatever he wants with the toys and making up storylines. Jet Li shoves the plutonium shit down this bad guy's throat and it's a pretty gruesome kill. I like the effect they use here. That's the other thing. Jet Li's fight scenes are a thousand times more entertaining than everybody else's. It's almost jarring to watch. They did not give a fuck about nobody else's fight scenes. She's fighting with her jacket, bro. Wrong kid. Definitely the wrong father. never gonna let you go. Ever. We definitely don't get movies like this anymore. It's pretty standard action movie stuff, but it's so lighthearted and it just wants to entertain you. This is basically just some cinematic junk food and it tastes good. It did its job 100%. A lot of action movies now can get too over budget and flashy, they always too serious and they try too hard to be epic. Sometimes you just wanna see some fucking backflips and shit, you know? And some tanks and some karate. All the performances were what you expected. Jet Li barely said anything in the whole fucking movie. This nigga has no lines and there was no stakes whatsoever. He just kind of beat the shit out of everybody the whole movie. Nobody ever really gave him a challenge except for DMX oddly enough. But it's got some cool fight scenes. It's got a fun performance from DMX. They look like they had hella fun making it. So this counts as a win, man. It's not a good movie at all. But they clearly weren't trying to make a good movie. They wanted it to be fun. And it was. That's it. 
thank y'all for watching. It's the end now. Make sure you hit a nigga cash app or something. Thanks for sharing the video and liking it and everything you do. Thank you to the Patreon yos especially. And thank you likewise for sponsoring. Make sure y'all download it. It's super clutch, bro. I promise. It's 100% free. You don't gotta do nothing. Remember, I'll be doing that live event on the 17th, so don't miss that. Link is in the description. We talking about the best black sitcom dads on there. It's gonna be lit. Who can win in a fight between the sitcom dads? Honestly, I got Uncle Phil thrashing everybody. But who knows? We'll talk about that and more, June 17th. But, okay, but we done here. Rest in peace, DMX, of course. He'll be back, though. That type of energy just don't disappear, you know, from the universe. He'll probably come back as a dog or some shit. he probably love that shit. The video over, though. I love you, no pause. Sorry for the long-ass outro. And like I said, the video over. Big in the pants.